Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark. Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to The Mr. Mortgage Show. And friends, you are in the right place if you want the data. Not the crazy headlines, but the data. The tips, the tricks, the strategies, and the data that you need so you can go out there and make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. If that is you, stay tuned. You're in for a great show this week. We've got a lot lined up for you. I've been combing through the data. We had the Federal Reserve meeting this week. There was a lot, I mean, mortgage application data. There was a lot of good stuff this week. And I say good stuff as a data geek. I'm going to dive through it and make, make it fun and palatable for you because I know it's, it can be quite boring sometimes, but uh, we always try to make it fun. And I say we because I am joined, as always, by my lovely producer, Jen. She is womaning the Anytime Hotline. And uh, that's how you get your questions on the air. You can call or text the Anytime Hotline. That number is 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. And Jen will get your questions on the air. Again, call or text 855-462-7292. If you prefer to do it via email, just visit MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page. And there you'll find an email icon. If you click on that icon, you can send her your questions via email. That's MrMortgageRadio.com or the Anytime Hotline, 855-462-7292. But as I mentioned, man, oh man, there was a ton of data this week. I'm going to dive right in. I'm chomping at the bit because I don't think anybody was surprised by the quarter point rate hike. Everybody kind of had that on the radar. And uh, what I found super interesting, though, was the press conference after the meeting. It was interesting seeing all of the the pundits line up on different sides of the argument going into this meeting. And I saw some interesting debate for actually believing the Fed was going to start lowering rates, which is mind boggling to me because inflation is not anywhere near his target. And what is it? Katie bar the door. (laughs) He's going to tame that inflation, even though he was super late to get started. But that's a whole nother topic. We've beaten that one into the ground. But nonetheless, he said that rate hikes were likely to continue. And we've been saying that for quite some time that we don't think this is over. It's refreshing that the the, uh, size of the rate hikes has started to show some consistency. And the belief is that we'll see quarter point hikes instead of those big, nasty three-quarter point hikes that we saw uh, last year. But nonetheless, he indicated that they are likely to continue. So the reality is there's nothing that you and I can do about it except make the best decisions that we can with the data of the day. So I don't think we're going to see the bottom fall out of the rate market anytime soon. You've heard me say that for a long time. Even, Even when things settle, I think we fall into the fives and stay there. And by fives, it could be five and a half, five and three quarters, but I don't think we're going below five anytime soon. I'll have far less hair by the time we get back down there. So the good news is there are strategies in today's market to still get some great interest rates. We talk about it all the time, interest rate buy downs. But hey, we're going to save that for your questions. We're going to dive into all of that in a minute. But I wanted to throw that data out there. Another interesting thing, a CNBC headline came out this week saying that mortgage applications had fallen off week over uh, week. And after the Christmas holiday, we saw a surge up in refinance and purchase activity, uh, which was interesting because typically the holiday season is slow. January is not a very busy month in, in the real estate world. But a lot of people seem to find opportunity in the market. Sellers are willing to pay closing costs, reduce the prices. So when rates pulled back down a little bit at the end of, de- end of December, into the beginning and mid part of January, I think people felt good and jumped back in. I believe the, the downtick had a lot to do with waiting to see what the fed was going to do this week, because most people have the misconception that whatever the fed does is going to directly impact rates. And as I mentioned, there were people thinking that there might be either no hike or even a pullback, which again is mind blowing. But nonetheless, I think Moving forward, we'll see that activity increase a little bit again. The one thing I'm finding super uh, interesting is there's just no inventory coming to the market. And again, part of that is seasonal. You know, December, holiday season, snow on the ground. It's never been an ideal, busy 
season for people to sell real estate. The kids are in the middle of the school season. Oftentimes spring and summer is when it's, when it's the busiest. And you can look at charts and graphs all the way back to when Jesus was a baby, and you're going to see that's pretty consistent. It slows down in the fourth quarter and starts to pick back up in the spring of the next year. So I believe we're going to go into a cycle where we're going to see a bit more activity. But the interesting thing is, as rates continue to increase and prices continue to stick, I think there's less and less desire for a current homeowner to want to sell their property. And because of that, I think that's going to continue to pressure the supply side of the equation. And guys, I don't care if interest rates are 50%. If fewer people want to sell than want to buy, prices are not going down. And we talked about that last week. We pulled back from the month over month and the year over year, and we pulled back and looked at decade by decade last week, all the way back to 1940. And we showed Through good times, bad times, recessions, high double-digit interest rates, real estate appreciated decade by decade for the last 80 years. And I'm sure if I had been able to go back further, the data set that I was using for last week's show was only back to 1940. I'm almost positive that we could have continued that back to the original first sale in this country. But my point in all of that is historically, or at least in that 80-year cycle, we've not seen a long-term down tick in real estate value. So I'm sharing all that just to encourage you to exhale. There's a lot of crazy, crazy news out there. And, you know, we live in the ultimate information age. We're all consuming content and data and news via our cell phone. And everybody has an opinion and everybody has a camera and a TikTok channel or a YouTube channel or a Facebook. But I just find it super interesting that a lot of the opinions that are being formulated are hunches and not based on data. So I just want to share that, just kind of back up a little bit and look at it on a larger scale. I get it. It's expensive right now to buy a home because of the cost of the money, but also because of the cost of the home. Nobody believes this is going to continue, certainly not at the pace we've seen it. I think we're into a lengthy, flattened, appreciation cycle. And I've said it many, many times. I believe some areas of the country might even slip a little bit. But right now, today, year over year, we're seeing appreciation. Month over month, not so much. But year over year, prices in January of 2023 are more than they were in January of 2022. So it's just interesting. I just encourage every Here, let's do it together, everybody. Breathe in. Exhale. Okay, now we got all the bad juju out of the air and we can dig into all of this. So if you've got questions or comments, um, I am very, very eager to to take your questions and comments. I'm super excited. That's always my favorite part of the show. We're going to dive into all of that. But as I mentioned, the Fed's rate hike wasn't a surprise. But to some people, the comments after the meeting That was what was surprising. He indicates that he's going to keep swinging at this pinata called inflation until he bursts it and candy falls everywhere. And then we can see rates come back down. But I don't know about you. I'm seeing gas prices on the rise in my area again. So I know inflation's not over. We got to watch that carefully. We have to watch the jobless claims. I know there was another round of layoffs. Interestingly enough, a lot of that's happening in the tech space. Um, The service industries and the, the more you know, blue collar, middle, middle, middle of the road, if you will, seems to still have a, a strong, strong labor market, but some of the tech seems to be bloated. And that might have been a byproduct of servicing the new economy during the pandemic. And now as things are slowing down, those obviously those jobs are not as vital. But anyway, you hear the music, you know what that means? That is my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this break. We're going to dive into more of the data, but more importantly, we're going to take your questions. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show. Sit tight. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you have any friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me, to the team, to the show. We'd love to help them any way we can. Just simply share the link, MrMortgageRadio.com, MrMortgageRadio.com. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. 
Paradise is closer than you think. West Building Contractors can help you create your perfect piece of paradise. They have mastered the art of pavers, hardscapes, summer kitchens, pools, and more. For a free design consultation and quote, visit westbuildingcontractors.com or call 772-284-6994. West Building Contractors offer new construction, luxury additions and remodels too. That's 772-284-6994 or westbuildingcontractors.com. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com www.reallygreatagents.com Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are tuned into the Mr. Mortgage Show, and we are so glad you're here. Thank you for spending a bit of your day with us. We love, love doing the show and couldn't do it without your questions or comments, so we certainly do appreciate you. Hey, if you've got questions or comments, just call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. Jen is womaning that hotline, 855 855- Four six two seven two nine two, and she will get your questions on the air. If you prefer to do it via email, just visit mrmortgageradio.com. Click on the email icon on the bottom of the page. That's mrmortgageradio.com, and she'll get your questions that way. But uh, speaking of Jen, she is the one that keeps me going, keeps me charged up, makes me sound good, and uh, gets your questions on the air. So let's check in. Hey, Jen, how you doing? Feels like we're in for a really great show today. Yeah, I think so too. We had a ton of data. Usually that gets everybody stirred up. There's a lot of questions around that. I know the big Federal Reserve announcement, everybody's kind of been waiting with bated breath. And one interesting statistic I saw this week, mortgage applications week over week were down, which was interesting because the last couple of weeks they were up. But I believe a lot of people were just kind of pulling back to see what was going to happen this week. Anyway, with all that being said, hey, Jen, let's get some questions going. I'm super excited. What do we have? Erica sent this. If the government keeps raising mortgage rates, won't housing prices have to start coming down? This whole thing confuses me. I'm ready to buy, but don't want to overpay. Hey, that was Erica. Okay, Erica, you are not alone. And I think that's what's going on in this market. I think a lot of people are just sitting back waiting and we've talked about it. There's no ticking time bomb like there was in the early 2000s. I started in the business in 1999 and I rode that wave like everybody else and saw those crazy, crazy, dangerous liar loans, we called them, and the negative amortization loans, which were super dangerous. And this isn't, you know, a flex or a brag on me, but I wrote one in my career and it was for somebody who only had a six month hold period for the property. But anyway, long story short, the availability of capital caused by those loan products is what drove the market last time, right? So one person was buying many, many properties to flip, often new construction. They were closing with no income, no asset verification loans, oftentimes with 100% financing. And for a while there, guys, there were loans that would go over 100%. Things were appreciating so quickly, they were allowing you to finance your closing costs. And it got out of hand in a hurry. 
Somebody just shared on social media an old talk I did on YouTube about this. But because of that, we had artificial demand. We had one person buying those multiple properties. So when those payments adjusted or those uh, interest only periods expired, now they were selling multiple properties, six, eight, 10 properties in some instances. Well, all of that easy money dried up. There was no demand on the secondary market. And there wasn't a guy who could walk in and buy 10 properties because suddenly only the loans that required verified income, verified assets, and a decent credit score were left. And those properties went into foreclosure. That's what caused the supply side spike in the early 2000s. Right now, we're not seeing that. We didn't have that artificial demand. The demand of this market was caused by low interest rates, which made capital affordable but it still required down payments. It still required fully underwritten income, fully underwritten assets. And because of that, there was a much more stable buyer, if you will, a much higher quality from a credit standpoint, not from a personal standpoint. This isn't a dig at anybody, but on paper from a risk standpoint to the lender, this time around, there was not that risk that was associated last time. And then more importantly, the vast majority of people were buying just their primary residence. And because of that, we had demand fueled by wanting to relocate. We had demand fueled by the cost of the money. And we had demand fueled by the sudden surge in equity. People sold and they were moving and paying cash. So the reason I'm sharing this, Erica, is not to try to give you a long-winded answer, although that's what I'm doing. It's to say that supply and demand is what controls the values, not the interest rates. And you've heard me mention it on more than one occasion. The higher interest rates are actually slowing down supply. And what I mean by that, if you're sitting at home right now, you own your home, raise your hand if you're not driving your car, if this is you. You own your home, you've got an all-time, lifetime low interest rate in equity, and you're still employed and you're able to pay your bills. See all those hands in the air, Erica? Those are people who don't want to sell their property. They're unlikely to bring that supply to the market. They're fat and happy or skinny and happy. I'm sorry. I meant, (laughs) you know what I mean? My point is that supply is not coming racing to the market. There's no need for those people to sell unless, what is it? I'm trying to remember the three reasons, relocation, death, or divorce. You know, one of those three things, you're always going to have movement in the market. But that's not what spurred this big run up in the market. So right now, there's still not an oversupply situation. We're seeing appreciation cooling, but year over year, we are still seeing an increase in value. And with the prices kind of sticking in this range that we're in, in some areas are still experiencing, you know, hot markets. Some areas are cooling off, but overall, nationally, We're seeing prices kind of hold in this range. We're not seeing significant downturns, but more importantly, we're not seeing a ton of supply that's going to trigger those downturns. So I don't think cost of money alone is enough to tip the scales. Um, Right now, there's still demand in the market. So I would watch supply and demand. I've said it many, many times. If you want to catch some of the back episodes where I dive deep on that, just check out MrMortgageRadio.com. MrMortgageRadio.com, that top link is the podcast link, but I've talked about supply and demand. Guys, we've talked about it on the air together just recently, a few weeks ago. I I did an episode during the pandemic where I referenced toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Suddenly, we couldn't get that anywhere. There was no supply, but an overwhelming demand. People were freaking out. They were hoarding it. So what happened to prices? Prices surged. And you were buying it wherever you could, whatever brand you could, and paying whatever people were asking for it. And I know that was a long answer. If you want to talk it through, I'm happy, happy to spend some time with you off the air. 855-462-7292 is the best way to reach us. But watch unemployment, because as long as people can pay their bills, they're unlikely to let their house slip. Um, Last time, people let their house slip because of payment shock. They were in the house. They had an interest-only loan. The interest-only period expired. The interest rate adjusted. Rates were going up, and suddenly they had a big big payment that they weren't anticipating having to pay. They thought they were going to sell the property way, way before that happened, and bam, payment shock forced them to sell. That, coupled with the oversupply that I mentioned because of the risky loan products, 
that's what tipped the scale in the favor of supply last time and pushed prices down. So anyway, I hope that helps. You can always call me off the air. I'll be happy, happy to answer any questions I can for you. But uh, you hear the music. You know what that means. That is my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this break. We'll be back with more of the show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you have any friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me, to the team, to the show. We'd love to help them any way we can. Just simply share the link, MrMortgageRadio.com, MrMortgageRadio.com. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Paradise is closer than you think. West Building Contractors can help you create your perfect piece of paradise. They have mastered the art of pavers, hardscapes, summer kitchens, pools, and more. For a free design consultation and quote, visit westbuildingcontractors.com or call 772-284-6994. West Building Contractors offer new construction, luxury additions, and remodels too. That's 772-284-6994 or westbuildingcontractors.com. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did, business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And if that is not the coolest intro and the coolest announcer, I love that intro. I really do. It gets me hyped up. I, I feel like I'm coming out. That's walkout music for a boxing match. But anyway, again, my name is Mark Itell. This is not a boxing match. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show. We do this each week right here. Same time, same station. We are super, super excited that you chose to spend a little bit of your day with us. Thank you so much for being here. If you've got questions or comments and you want them on the air, just call or text. Jen is standing by womaning the Anytime Hotline. Again, call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. She'll get your questions on the air. If you prefer to send her an email, just visit MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page. There is an email icon there. Click on that and you can shoot your questions to Jen that way. But hey, speaking of Jen and your questions, let's keep them coming. Hey, Jen, what do we have? Caden has this question. I caught the end of a podcast when you said, it may make more sense to pay a higher rate with a VA loan than refi later. Can you explain this idea? Thanks. Hey, Caden. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember the exact episode, but first let me say thanks for checking out the podcast. I'm super excited that you're a listener. Guys, if you want to check out the podcast, go to MrMortgageRadio.com and click on that top link and you'll find it there. So this week I had an interesting conversation around this topic, and this probably is what we were talking about on the podcast, although I don't ex- remember the exact scenario. Um, but nonetheless, I was, I was talking to an agent who's working with a veteran who has very, very little money to put down. 
And the gentleman is super excited because the VA loan allows for 100% financing. Well, the VA loan also allows the seller to contribute money towards the closing costs and some third-party fees. So he was still a little bit short money-wise. Well, a lot of people don't know this, but if you pay a slightly higher interest rate, you can get a lender credit, right? So the lender is actually giving you back some money. So what we were talking about was if you took the seller contribution and the lender credit by paying a slightly higher interest rate, there's a good chance the veteran can get into the transaction with no money out of pocket. Now, the refi part of the strategy, I know it's a second closing and it's a refi and it's not optimal, but in this instance, keep in mind the gentleman didn't have the money for the closing costs. So a seller contribution and a lender credit. So the second part of that strategy is the refinance. So there's a streamlined refinance for the, the VA loan called the EARL, the Interest Rate Reduction Refinance Loan. It's EARL, I-R-R-R-L. Again, I sound like a SEAL. I-R-R-R-L is the EARL. Let's just call it the EARL. It's easier for me. But nonetheless, the EARL allows you to do a streamlined refinance. You're not getting an appraisal. There's very, very little closing costs associated with it compared to a normal purchase. Now, the requirements of that are your current VA loan has to be in place and in good standing for 210 days. So figure around seven months and then you do an EARL to lower the interest rate. So that's most likely what I was talking about. If you've got the money for the um, closing costs, obviously you don't want to incur a second set of closing costs, even though they're reduced fees with the EARL. It's not the ideal scenario, but it is a scenario available or a strategy, if you will, available to veterans that a lot of people don't think of. Because think about, um, there used to be a dealership called CarMax, a used car dealership, and they had this brilliant demonstration and I think very visually and guys this applies actually across the board so let's run with this analogy for just a minute we all have seen those long skinny balloons that the clowns make balloon animals with right so in this commercial on one end was written fees and on the other end was written price well for this analogy on one end write fees and on the other end write interest rate and if you squeeze the interest rate down the fee side of the balloon gets bigger and that's just how it works. The lowest possible interest rate, I can give somebody a 3% interest rate today, but there's fees associated with it. So if you squeeze that interest rate down, the fee side is going to go up. If you squeeze the fees down, in this case, all the way to a credit from the lender, obviously the interest rate is going to go up. That's just how it works. A balanced rate is no origination, no discount, and that's the fees, that's the interest rate of the day, the par interest rate. And that's the balloon analogy. So that's probably the best visual I can give you is if you reduce the rate, you're going to increase the fees. But if you reduce the fees, you're likely to increase the rate. And there's a balance where that rate costs no fees. And that's why oftentimes people will say, I want the lowest possible interest rate. And what they're thinking is that's the cheapest money, right? Which it is long term. But we had this scenario play out this week where we closed a transaction we were using a seller contribution to buy the rate down and we were able to buy the rate down too. It was a pretty attractive rate in the low fives, but the borrower, awesome, awesome people. He, he was hung up on wanting a, a rate at 4.99. He wanted to be under five, wanted that barbecue brag, right? Where he's at the, the neighborhood barbecue and he wanted to tell everybody he got a rate in the fours. Well, the cost to get it down that next step down was prohibitive. We looked at the additional cost versus the monthly savings. And in this example, it was probably around 30 or $35 a month. Well, the, the additional thousands and thousands of dollars to buy that rate down that next little step didn't make any sense. So the lowest rate is not always the cheapest money. If you look at the rate and fee balloon analogy like that, so, Caden, that's what I was talking about. I was talking about using a lender credit to help that veteran get into the deal and then using the interest rate reduction refi strategy after 210 days to get them a lower rate. And you you might have walked in on the end of that conversation. So I appreciate you asking that question. It, it's an interesting, interesting um, scenario. It doesn't always work out because obviously if rates go up, there's no refi in the future. 
But the cool thing about the interest rate reduction strategy with the VA loan is it doesn't matter. Once you're beyond 210 years, 210 years, let's hope we're not doing a 210 year mortgage. Once you get beyond 210 days, it's available to everybody. There are some caveats. It has to be a true savings to the veteran. There's a certain percentage that you have to lower the rate down, but it's a great, great loan program. And a lot of people took advantage of it during the pandemic. And we saw some 15 year money in the ones with that interest rate reduction strategy. So awesome question. I really, really appreciate. I hope that helps. Um, it made me think I'm going to make a video for the Facebook page with me squeezing that balloon. Who knows? Maybe I'll just bend it into a balloon dog or a balloon cat or a giraffe or something and test my skills. But I appreciate that. That was a great question. Hey guys, you hear the music? You know what that means? That means I've got to stop talking and take us into this break. But on the other side of this break, we're going to be back with more of your questions. Sit tight on the other side of this commercial break. We'll be back with more of the show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you have any friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me, to the team, to the show. We'd love to help them any way we can. Just simply share the link, MrMortgageRadio.com, MrMortgageRadio.com. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Paradise is closer than you think. West Building Contractors can help you create your perfect piece of paradise. They have mastered the art of pavers, hardscapes, summer kitchens, pools, and more. For a free design consultation and quote, visit westbuildingcontractors.com or call 772-284-6994. West Building Contractors offer new construction, luxury additions, and remodels too. That's 772-284-6994 or westbuildingcontractors.com. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are tuned in to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you heard the man call or text 855-462-7292. That's 855 462 7292. That is the Anytime Hotline, and Jen will get you on the air. If you prefer to shoot her an email, just visit MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click on the email icon and you can shoot your questions that way. But hey, let's tear through a rapid round of questions because I know we've got a backlog over there. So Jen, what do we have? Hollywood sent this one. I just want to say thanks. You did the mortgage for my buyers and everyone was impressed. You and your team are awesome. Drinks on me. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay is right. Jen, I don't know if you met Hollywood. Um, it's His name is Pete. Uh, I call him Hollywood. The property was down in Hollywood. And he is a very cool, flamboyant guy. He should be a 
on the Walk of Fame in L.A. Very, very cool guy. But, um, yeah, you're very welcome. Very welcome, my man. And thank you. We actually met via the radio show. So, guys, call us if you have questions or if you're jammed up out there in the real world because Pete did. And he was selling his investment property down in Hollywood and buying a property up here. And the mortgage company that was working with the buyers ran into some roadblocks. And I'm not knocking anybody, um, but we do have well-earned bald spots and the team is pretty experienced. So we were able to offer them a way around the hurdles. We jumped in and got the transaction closed. And that would have never happened if Pete, a.k.a. Hollywood, hadn't heard the show and and given us a call. So, brother, I thank you for that. And uh, we are going to take you up on those drinks because you guys are great. And I'd love to spend some more time with you. But, uh, hey, Jen, do we have more questions? Zach sent this one. I'm just starting to research options to finance investment property. Will the landlord loan work for a fixer-upper? Can I finance the repair costs, too? Hey, Zach, that's a great question, my man. Um, The landlord loan will not work for a fixer upper if you're trying to roll the repair costs in. But good news is there are fix and flip loans. So the landlord loan is designed for something that's already producing income or has the ability to be producing income. So if there's already a tenant in place or a vacant property or even an Airbnb, that's what the landlord loan is designed for. But there's a host of fix and flip loans that are available. Typically how they'll work is here. The the one that just flashed into my mind, if you put 20% down to purchase the property, so 80% of the purchase price, but they'll finance 100% of the rehab as long as the, that total loan amount does not exceed 70% of the after repair value. And if you guys are investors or flippers out there, Everybody in that world is is uh, familiar with the term after repair value. And if you're looking at uh, investment opportunities, sometimes you'll see that. That means assuming that all the repairs are made, that, that the assumption is it's going to be worth this higher number. So as long as the mortgage to purchase at 80% plus the renovations doesn't exceed 70% of the after repair value, ARV, then you're good to go. So that's a fix and flip loan. A lot of times what you'll see people do is they'll do a fix and flip loan and then refinance it with the landlord loan because that one's not looking at your income. It's just looking at credit. And if it's a refinance, they're not even digging into your assets because you've got equity built into the property. So oftentimes you'll see a fix and flip loan or a private money loan being refinanced with the landlord loan. But hey, man, brilliant, brilliant question. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, I invite you to give us a shout if you need more information. Just call 855-462-7292. But hey, Jen, do we have another question? Jonathan has a question. My wife and I are willing to co-sign my daughter's mortgage. She's a first-time buyer, but my wife and I are not. Can she still use the FHA mortgage? So, Jonathan, brilliant question, my man. And short answer is yes, it's not a problem. You can be a non-occupying co-borrower on your daughter's FHA loan. And if you're not going to live in the property, that's going to be the term. We, we use the term co-signer as a generic term, but in the world of mortgages, you're going to be a non-occupying co-borrower. And both you and your wife can be individual non-occupying co-borrowers if additional assets or additional income is necessary to help your daughter qualify. And yes, the FHA loan still can be utilized. And fun fact, guys, FHA is not only for first-time home buyers. You can have owned property in the past. A matter of fact, you can sell a property and buy a new property with an FHA loan the same day. There are some rules around it, you know, but by and large, the FHA loan is not just for first-time home buyers. But great question, Jonathan. I appreciate that one. Hey, Jen, what else do we have? Mitchell sent us this. I found a house advertised with an assumable mortgage. How does this work? Can you and your team help me with this? Hey, Mitchell, another brilliant question. Man, you guys are bringing the heat today. So you're going to see more and more of that because a lot of people have ridiculously low interest rates and it's exciting to be able to assume a two or three or 4% interest rate. Here's the thing though, you're assuming the loan exactly as it exists today. Meaning let's use very round numbers. Let's say the house is worth 400,000 
and the loan is 300000 You know, they bought it a few years ago, refinanced it a few years ago, whatever the case is, they've got $100,000 in equity. For you to be able to assume that loan, you've got to put down $100,000 because that loan amount can't increase. So that's where a lot of people get wrapped around the axle because you've got to be able to buy out that equity position. And I don't know of any lenders that will loan against that equity and do an equity line or a second mortgage so you don't have to put that full amount down. Now, to answer your question, I would love, love, love to be able to help you. But sadly, with an assumption, you have to go through the servicer. So the the company that the current owner is making their payments to, that's where you start. They're the ones that facilitate the assumption. And it's an amazing opportunity. FHA loans, VA loans, USDA loans are all assumable. They are, that, that assumption is facilitated through the servicer, the person who collects the payments. You have to buy out the equity position. Those are the big highlights. But if you've got questions or you just want somebody to look over your shoulder and help you through the process, I'd be happy to do it, my man. But you hear the music. You know what that means? That is my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this break. We're going to take more of your questions and be back with more of the show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you have any friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me, to the team, to the show. We'd love to help them any way we can. Just simply share the link, MrMortgageRadio.com, MrMortgageRadio.com. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Paradise is closer than you think. West Building Contractors can help you create your perfect piece of paradise. They have mastered the art of pavers, hardscapes, summer kitchens, pools, and more. For a free design consultation and quote, visit westbuildingcontractors.com or call 772-284-6994. West Building Contractors offer new construction, luxury additions, and remodels too. That's 772-284-6994 or westbuildingcontractors.com. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes, we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this, it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes, I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm laughing because I almost missed my chair. I ran out at that break to grab a bottle of water, and I'm not as graceful as I used to be, and certainly not as graceful as I sound, but uh, only Jen got to laugh at that one, so maybe I shouldn't have shared it. But uh, anyway, 855-462-7292 is how you get your questions on the air, 855-462-7292. You can call or text that number anytime. 
That's why we call it the Anytime Hotline, 855-462-7292. Or shoot us your questions via email, and you can do that by visiting MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click on the email icon, and you can shoot your questions that way, MrMortgageRadio.com. But I know we've got some backlogged over there. I have been rambling, so let's rip through a few of your questions. Hey, Jen, what do we have? Kyle is asking... I'm buying a house in Virginia. How do we get started with you and your company? I guess I should ask if you lend in Virginia. Hey, Kyle. Thanks for that, my man. I greatly appreciate that question. We can certainly help you in Virginia. Um, Hey, guys, I guess I need to throw that out there. This is way more than a radio show. We are actually a group of mortgage brokers that are doing this every day, helping our clients. So, Uh, Yeah, would be honored to help you in Virginia. The easiest way to do it, why don't you just check out MrMortgageRadio.com, the website, MrMortgageRadio.com. There's a ton of information on there. There's application link. There's uh, links to get more information about me, about the team, and then certainly all of our contact information. And then also, too, that Anytime Hotline, 855-462-7292. We call it the Anytime Hotline because when we're not on the air in the studio, that pushes to my office. So somebody will grab the call. I'll be happy to jump on the call with you myself if I can. If not, someone on my team will jump in and we'll be happy to help. But to answer your question, we can help you. And the easiest way to get in touch with us is uh, MrMortgageRadio.com or 855-462-7292. But man, I greatly appreciate that question. And I do appreciate the opportunity to help you if we can. Thanks for that. Hey, Jen, do we have another question? Natalie sent this. We want to keep our house and rent it. I have two questions. How much do we need to rent it for so the payment doesn't affect us qualifying for a new loan? Are we even able to use the rent income since it's not rented yet? I'm not sure how this works. I've tried Google, but the answers are vague. Thank you. We love your show. And Jen is awesome. Oh, thanks, Natalie. <laughs> Jen is awesome. If if Natalie really wrote that, or, or is Jen bucking for a raise? I don't know. But I agree, Natalie. Jen is awesome. Hey, obviously, you've done your homework because that's a brilliant, brilliant question. What you're referring to, and for everybody out there, if you're going to keep your current property, you need what's called a debt service coverage ratio. You need to bring more in than rental income so that that expense can be taken off your debt to income ratio. So let's use round numbers. If your mortgage payment, including principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and if there's an association fee, so throw all that into a basket, if that number is $750, and I know that's highly unlikely in today's uh, real estate world, but I just need round numbers for my old tired brain today. But let's say that's $750. In order for that to be a wash on your debt to income ratio, you will need to collect $1,000 in rental income. So 75% of the rental income is being used to offset the debt associated with that property. That's your debt service coverage ratio. 75% of the income is used to cover the debt. If that's not the case, then it's a negative scenario and your your personal income is going to be needed to make up that difference. And the reason they do that, guys, is in case there's a vacancy or repairs, they just apply an arbitrary percentage to the rental income. But it's a wonderful time to employ this strategy because a lot of people have a ton of equity, low monthly payments, and they're going to generate a lot of positive cash by keeping the property. So we're seeing this more and more and more. Now, to answer the second part of your question, you can use that income to offset that debt as long as you have a lease in place with a start date prior to your first mortgage payment on the new property and you're going to have to have collected whatever the customary first, last, and security or first and security. So it's got to be a real lease. Somebody has to sign it and give you a check. It's not, you know, you're, you're saying my cousin's going to rent it. It's got to be, you know, an executed lease, documents, and somebody issue that deposit check to get the lease started. So with that, you should be fine. Now, I do want to throw this out there because a lot of people are in this scenario where they'll keep their current property and rent it out. Guys, You've got to claim that rental income on your tax returns for it to be used to offset your debt. I can't tell you how many times we've seen somebody relocate to another state. They'll keep their primary residence, rent it out just in case they need to move back and it doesn't work. 
and then they find themselves in the new location. Everything goes great. They've rented for a year or two in the new location. They're ready to buy, and we're going through this exact scenario that Natalie just described. And here's the thing. If you're not claiming that income on your tax returns, we've got to count all of that debt against you in your your debt-to-income ratio. And the reason that's important is a lot of people assume if it's break-even or even a slight loss each month, their logic is they don't have any income. Well, that's not true. Every dollar of that rental income is income, and you've got adequate expenses to write off against it. So take the time to properly prepare that schedule for your tax return because it's going to come back to bite you if you're not claiming that income and you go purchase the new property, you're going to have to qualify carrying that debt from the previous property into your debt to income ratio for the new house. So I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to throw that out there as a tip because we see a lot of people, especially first time landlords are not prepared for this and they end up getting themselves wrapped around the axle later when they're trying to buy a property. But hey, brilliant question, brilliant strategy. What a wonderful time to do it with where rents are and where a lot of people's current mortgage payments are. So hopefully you are generating a lot of positive cash and it works out well for you. But great question. Hey, Jen, do we have anything else over there? Bob is asking, we're in the middle of selling our house and the buyer's bank is saying the appraisal is low. The neighbor's house sold for more six months ago and it's not as nice. They want to cancel the contract and won't even show me the appraisal. Does this sound right? I mean, it doesn't seem fair to me. Hey, Bob, I'm sorry you're going through that, brother. That's super, super frustrating. Um, The reality is they don't have to show you the appraisal. It's the property of the buyer. They actually pay for the appraisal. Although I don't see why they wouldn't show you the appraisal if it's, you know, genuinely under value. So I can understand your frustration. Uh, maybe have your agent ask again. I don't, I don't know the details of your scenario, but this is where really great agents pay off on both sides of the transaction because sometimes the negotiations can, can become contentious, especially around value. Um, to the other part of your question where you said the neighbor's house sold for more six months ago, that's always the challenge with a transitioning market because six months ago we were at the peak of the peak of the peak and if things have settled down a little bit, appraisers might be a little more conservative as the market transitions. And I don't know the details. I don't know the difference in value, if it's something close that can be negotiated or if it's wildly different. And then the, one of the dangerous things about real estate is we're always subject to our own bias. So you mentioned it's not as nice as yours and I'm not suggesting that's not the case, but some of that is left for interpretation. I've got an appraiser friend of mine that we talk that I consult with all the time And, you know, like the difference between a granite countertop and a modern solid surface countertop or white shaker cabinets versus, you know, heavy wood oak cabinets. He's looking at the quality of the materials, not the subjective nature of the design element or the whatever's in trend. So sometimes people will go into a property and say, listen, this is all this is a modern color scheme. And it should be worth more, you know, stainless appliances versus black appliances. Well, the appraiser is looking at the level of quality, not necessarily the the desirability or the, the current trend of design elements. So I just throw that out there only as a caution when we look at properties one next to the other. Some of that is subjective value. But, hey, I appreciate the question. I'll be happy to deep dive that with you if you want to give me a shout off the air. If there's anything I can do to help you, I'm happy to run a value report for you. Just go to MrMortgageRadio.com and click on that free value report. You hear me talk about it all the time. It's about a 10 or 12 page report. It's not an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online type of things. So check that out. Go to MrMortgageRadio.com. Click on that free value report link and I'll um, at least give you some fuel for your argument. I don't know if it'll help you. (laughs) You might see that and think, oh my God, I don't want to use this, but it'll give you an unbiased opinion of value. But uh, brilliant, brilliant question. I hope that helps. Hey, you hear the music? You know what that means? We have wrapped up another week of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Man, oh man, where does the time go? Hey, Jen, I'm going to throw it over to you. Say bye, Jen. Bye, Jen. 
Have a wonderful week. <laughs> Have a wonderful week, everybody. Hey, if you need us during the week, check out MrMortgageRadio.com. All my info is there, MrMortgageRadio.com or 855-462-7292. Have an amazing week. We'll be back next week, same time, same station. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show.